welcome back to my channel. It is officially fall 2021, so that means it is time for an empties video of all of the products I used up to the last drop during summer 2021. Normally, I start my videos by showing you the bag I keep everything in, and the bag is currently empty, so I will be putting the products back into this as I kind of go through everything, but Use this bag if you do not know what George Brown School of Aesthetics and Makeup is. That is where I went to aesthetic school here in Toronto, Canada. So without further ado, let's jump into this video because there's a lot of stuff to talk about. So when I was thinking about how I'm going to kind of do this video to make sure everything kind of flows, I thought, why not do kind of like the order of operations? So we're going to go hair, skincare, body care, sunscreen, makeup. So real quick, this is not anything to do with empties, but a little bit of a kind of update on this Hourglass Ambient Edit Palette that I just, this would have been the last video I uploaded. So when I did that video, I mentioned that this palette is a little too dark for my skin tone. I stand by that 100%. Today I'm actually wearing it again. I use a different set of brushes, brushes that are much larger, much fluffier, and I ended up applying it under my Bare Minerals Original Foundation. As you can see, even though I've got a solid layer of powder foundation on over top, it's still making my skin tone look darker, and then to give the um, finishing powder another chance, I used it on my face, and as you can see, once again, I am different shades all throughout, so still too dark for me. This will be better once I'm in my kind of self-tan season. Going into the empties, the first thing we're going to talk about is this Equate Dandruff Zinc Pyrinthium Shampoo. So a few months ago, I was reading a medical journal, and they were talking about the usage of Perithium Zinc for people struggling with pattern hair loss, whether that is male or female, as Perithium Zinc is really good for reducing inflammation. Since I've been using this in combination with a topical minidoxyl spray or topical Rogaine, I have noticed that especially like up here through like the temple recession, which is where a lot of men see first signs of pattern hair loss, I've definitely seen some new hair growth. Now, it took me about three, three and a half, maybe even four months to start seeing results, but now a year into this hair care routine, I've noticed such a big difference. And this one was nice. I did switch to the brand name Head & Shoulders, just their classic clean shampoo, because this one felt a little bit drying, and then the one by Head & Shoulders, I do not find it to feel as drying as this one, but after I use this, since it can dry out the hair, and depending on if I'm exercising or not in the morning, sometimes I can wash my hair up to twice a day. I always follow this up with either a conditioner or a hydrating hair mask. So. This is nice, but I prefer the brand name as I feel like it's less drying. Two products, I'm gonna talk about them at the same time. Once we have a dry shampoo by Monat, Monet, whatever you wanna call it, and then I have another one by Batiste. Did not personally care for either one. This has a little bit of product left in it. I'm not gonna worry about finishing it off, but these I did not care for either one as they both left a really heavy white cast in my hair and I don't know, this one was just kind of, it left a very kind of noticeable white cast that didn't really dissipate. And the one by Patisse, I picked up the rose gold one because I read for darker hair colors, it was nice and it didn't leave a white cast. For me, it still left a white cast and I like the way it smelled, but I don't know. I've got one by Orbe I really enjoy. I've got one by Kerastase I really enjoy. They don't leave a white cast, so I'm gonna skip on these two. So the next product I have is this Tresme 24 hour amplifying mousse with collagen. This was nice. This took me year, like I think two years to get through. It was nice, it just wasn't a standout product. And I'm currently using the Densifique Mousse by Kerastase, and I enjoy that many, many times more over than I do this one. The scent's nicer, it doesn't leave a really greasy or sticky feeling to the hair, and it gives my hair better volume. So before I blow dry my hair, I add that, and I really enjoy it. It's, I think, three times more expensive than this one, but for me, the price is worth it because the product performs better. Another product that I <laughs> finished off right before sitting down to film this, this is my Orbe Freestyler Working Shampoo. 
I really enjoy using this before I film, before I go out, just because it's really good for adding a light hold to my hair without making it feel weighed down or crunchy or sticky. It's really nice. I will be ordering another one from Sephora ASAP because I cannot be without this hairspray. And I almost forgot about this one, but the last hair care product, another product that took me I think two years, two and a half years to finish up. This is the Brio Geo Be Well Organic Plus Cold Press 100% Castor Oil. I was trying this as a hair oil because after I color my hair or after I do some type of like maybe scalp scrub, I like to use a hair oil just to lock in hydration after I put on a hydrating serum to really kind of make sure my scalp is nourished. I didn't like this. It was really, really hard to spread through the hair, and I normally ended up cutting it with a more lightweight, more emollient serum or oil because this was just, it was not pleasant to work with on its own. So definitely will not be repurchasing this. Okay, let's move on to skincare. So the first up, we are gonna start with our cleansers. And the first one I have to talk about is this Aven Zericom AD Cleansing Oil. This is absolutely lovely and it's a multi-use product. So I use this primarily of removal of makeup and sunscreen on face and body. However, you can add a few pumps to your bath water and then soak in it and your skin just feels so cocooned and nourished. It is absolutely stunning. And with this product, I know here in Canada at Shoppers Drug Mart, you can normally find it in a two pack, which makes it roughly two bottles for the just over the cost of one bottle. So, so I have another pack of these in my closet waiting to go and I absolutely love these. The other one from the two pack I got this in is currently in my washroom being used, being loved, will continue to repurchase because it's a great value for money and it's just, it's wonderful. A, another cleansing product that I've talked about here on my channel that I absolutely love was this Inky List Oat Cleansing Balm. At first when I started using it, it was quite a thick, grippy, slippy product, but if you work a small amount into dry skin, take your time to emulsify it with a little bit of water, it gets everything off. And then it's your choice if you go in with a second step cleanser. I normally do because I use this in the evening as my first step cleanser of my double of my double cleansing routine. Really enjoy this. I want to get another one. I just have a few other cleansing oil products I need to make it through first, but Great one, does not have any fragrance, irritating ingredients. It's really, really nice. And I think anyone with skin will enjoy this. Another product I talked about recently is this Glow Recipe Papaya Enzyme Cleansing Balm. This is a product I enjoyed. I liked the texture. I liked how it felt on the skin. However, if my skin was feeling kind of agitated as I, because I do have rosacea. If my skin was feeling slightly irritable or dehydrated, this could really sting. So I enjoyed it. More often than not, I did not experience any issues with it, but for cleansing balm, it's pricey. Sometimes I felt like it did it better at removing than others. For me, I like this. If you want to treat yourself and you really enjoy the brand, I think it's really nice for me. I'm glad I got to experience it, but I won't be repurchasing it. Another product that if you saw my overall for the Dior range where I talked about all of Dior's makeup products, skincare products, and, and the Dior Prestige range I've tried out, you would have seen me talking about this. This took me, oh my goodness, I think at least six months to finish off. This is their Dior Prestige Cleansing Balm. I believe it's like $120 or $150 here in Canada. I did not enjoy it. I did not enjoy it at all. It struggled to remove makeup. It struggled to remove sunscreen. It didn't rinse off really well. And if I found, if I just tried to use this and then blot my face with a towel, because sometimes I like to do that to see how well a cleansing balm actually breaks up removes things. It's just like it muddied up any product I had on my face and then it was all over my white towel. So save yourself a hundred plus dollars and skip on this. Up next, we have the Cozarx Low pH Good Morning Gel Cleanser. This was an interesting cleanser. I ended up using it more as a body wash as it 
it could irritate my skin if i use this more than once or twice in a row it would really start to irritate my skin but i used it on my body i really enjoyed it as a body wash and it has this really beautiful kind of ginseng scent which i really enjoyed it's just a very kind of healing soothing refreshing scent and i really really enjoyed this so if it didn't irritate my skin, I would repurchase this, but for me, there's other products I like to use as a body wash, so I will not be repurchasing this. Another product that, this is a kind of deluxe sample size, but this is the Biophora Bioactive Cleanser. Bio Biophora is a brand that a lot of people probably won't know about. When I was in aesthetic school, this is a brand that I was trained on, and it is a brand that you normally find through retailed licensed professionals. For me, when I was in school, I did not experience any issues with their products, but that was us using these products on my skin maybe once every few days. However, bought the products, started using them here, and over time I've just find they really irritate my skin. I can't use them consistently because they all have different blends of like fragrances and essential oils, which a lot of people, they don't bother. I like using them, or I find essential oils and fragrance and skincare to be quite soothing. They really set you up for this kind of experience when using your skincare products. However, for me, with my rosacea, they can sometimes really irritate my skin, so that's why I normally gravitate towards fragrance-free products. This would not recommend using around your eyes. It stings, and if I use this two days in a row or try to use it more, it really stings. And, and it's a pretty pricey range that is harder to find unless you're going to, like, your favorite esthetician, med spa, dermatologist. This is just not a product I was crazy about. Up next, speaking of products that took me a long time to go through, this is the MAC Mineralized Clay Mask. I know I got this in one of my gratis orders right before I left MAC. So that would have put me around August of 2019 when I got this. I remember I got this because I needed something to get me to the dollar amount that I was allotted for my gratis order. So I threw this in and I don't like it. It's, for some reason, it just really, really stings. I believe it does either have fragrance or essential oils. And it just, for me, it wasn't a product I really enjoyed. And when I worked at MAC, I don't remember selling many of these. I think I got it just because I needed to meet that dollar amount, but I was also curious because I didn't really know anything about the product other than what I would learned in training. So skip on this. Up next, we have some toners or essences that I really enjoy. So the first one is the Sana Soy Milk Hydrating toner this is really really wonderful in my one of my previous ones i talked about using the rich version this is i believe this is the light version or this is the rich i can't i don't remember because i can't read them but i will have all the correct information in the description box down below when we get into like january february where it's really cold central heating is blasting I will be getting another bottle of this. I believe it's around $13 or $15. It's absolutely wonderful. I recommend it for anyone who likes a good hydrating toner or essence. Other essence I have is this Nature Republic Soothing and Moisture Aloe Vera 90% Toner. This was nice. It wasn't standout. It does have a fragrance to it. It can irritate my skin specifically around the fronts of my cheeks or if I get it too close to my eyes. This can really kind of sting and irritate my skin. So it took me quite a while to get through. I believe last time I was in the US, I picked this up at Target. It was nice. I won't repurchase. We have the Dior Perseus Micro Essence Eye Serum. There's no way around it. This is very expensive. I believe it's either $260 or maybe even $300 now with the price increases. It's a gorgeous product. The kind of applicator of it has this beautiful kind of gold with these little pearl details that are really nice for massaging around the eyes. I have, I do have another one of these currently in my skincare fridge because I like using it in the evening. It's, it's definitely a luxury indulgence purchase that 
If it's not in your budget, I would not say run out and buy it right now. But if you have the money to spare and you want to treat yourself, you want a nice sensorial experience, I really, really recommend this. Only downside with this is when you get close to the bottom, some of the product will leak out. So look, you are losing some product, it gets a little messy, but for me, I love the product inside so much that I keep buying it. Another Dior product, this is their Hydrolife Cooling Eye Sorbet. This, I liked it at first, but then as I proceeded to carry on using it after I think the first month, month and a half of using it, I found it would irritate me around my eyes, specifically in the outside corner of my eyes. This is a lot more affordable compared to the Dior Prestige Eye Serum, as I believe this is around the $60 mark. However, since this does cause irritation around the corners of my eye, I will not be repurchasing this. So two of my favorite skincare products, I've been using them for years absolutely love them are the Timeless Skincare Coenzyme Q10 Serum and the Timeless Matrixel Synth 6 Serum. I purchased both of these because Angie from Hot and Flashy raved about these for years. So I finally tried them out about two years ago. I've been repurchasing currently in my skincare fridge. I have these as well as the Timeless Skincare Vitamin C Serum that you've seen me talk about. I have the big size of all three of those serums in my skincare fridge and I have these two in my backup closet ready to go when I need them. So I really love these. I know in the US they are now available at Target. The price range is, the price point is quite reasonable in my opinion for the quality product you are getting. So absolutely love these, won't be without them, will repurchase. A skincare product that I, I just, didn't care for. This is the CeraVe Hydrating Serum with Hyaluronic Acid. This was a CeraVe product I hadn't tried before and I picked it up because one of my girlfriends was telling me how much she loved this. So I picked it up. I found that for me, it was a little too emollient to be used as a serum. However, it was too light to be used as a moisturizer and as someone with kind of normal to oily skin normally lighter weight things i enjoy because they don't feel heavy on my skin um another downside is the bottom of it has like this little kind of hole in it i guess for kind of like keeping something with packaging not sure but it's it's like getting water on me. I guess that's where it was in my skincare fridge and sometimes condensation will get on the bottom of the fridge floor. But yeah, um, this for me is a skip. So another little baby I finished off. This is my prescription tretinoin. This paper is just my kind of prescription information kind of peeled back, but I use a tretinoin. This is a cream formulation at 0.025%. These little tubes, I only use tretinoin about three to four days a week, depending on how my skin is feeling. I get great results using this. I've This little tube took me about seven months to use. So for me, it's great. I did use a different, I think I used a 0.5% gel tretinoin when I still lived in the US. In the US, I... I only replenished it, I think twice, because for me, it wasn't covered by my insurance and it was around $100 every time I purchased it. However, here in Canada, my benefits through my husband's employer there do cover this as a prescription. So, so I ended up paying, I think, three or $4 out of pocket when I replenished this. And everyone knows tretinoin is kind of the gold standard when it comes to anti-aging skincare along with usage along with daily usage of sunscreen so love this won't be without it i've got a another one currently going in my washroom now and i have an ongoing refill through my dermatologist so if you can get your hands on it don't worry about using it every single day slow and steady gets you great results and another little point to put out. Some people will experience purging or irritation when they start using this, but go slow, go steady, listen to your skin, buffer it with a moisturizer 
before you apply it if you need to. And for me, it's been great. It does take about six to nine months to really start seeing results, but once you start seeing those results, you stay consistent, it just gets better and better. So I love my Tretinoin. If it's for you, definitely give it a go. So next we have some moisturizers. The first one is the Biophora Antioxidant Moisturizer. Much like the cleanser, it is a very fragrant essential oil heavy product. For me, I used it as a hand cream because on my face it was just like redness city. My rosacea flared like crazy. So Biophora, not cheap, don't recommend. Another product that I wasn't wowed by is this Cosrx Pure Fit Sika Cream. It's not a bad product. For me, it was a little too lightweight, and this does not have the inclusion of fragrance as far as the ingredients listed on the package, but it has a scent, and sometimes if I got it too close to my eyes, it would irritate my eyes, so... For me, this was just kind of like a, sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't work, but in general, I never felt like I was satisfied with the hydration or the occlusive feeling on my skin. It didn't feel like it was really locking in moisture. So for me, this is a skip. Similar boat that I don't dislike it, but I don't love it was this e.l.f. Holy Hydration Face Cream. This was an interesting one. I was very curious to try it because it is a fragrance-free moisturizer. It's from e.l.f., so it's quite affordable. I believe it's around $10 or $13 here in Canada. For me, it was weird. The texture was quite heavy, quite greasy feeling, but my skin didn't really feel moisturized after I used it. So this ended up being really nice for buffering my tretinoin cream when I needed to, but it was just kind of lackluster. I don't really know who I would recommend it for. Maybe if you're someone who doesn't need a lot of moisture to your skin, but you like that more heavy, occlusive feeling, you might enjoy this. And if you know you want to try a moisturizer for under $20, you might like this. For me, though, won't repurchase it. Moisturizer that I did love was this Aveeno Calm and Restore Moisturizer. This is a very interesting one. It is more of a gel moisturizer, more of like a gel cream moisturizer. I find it leaves my skin feeling hydrated, nourished, cocooned without ever feeling heavy. So this is something I like to use on nights when I would use my Zen Sickle Fate Barrier Cream or my La Roche-Posay Cicaplast B5 Balm. I like to use those every now and then on nights when I'm not using Tretinoin because those products are great for barrier repair, barrier healing. So since I have rosacea, I like to use my off nights of tretinoin to really kind of pamper and soothe my skin. So on nights when I use a very heavy occlusive product like that, I really like using this under as it's just a nice kind of drink of water for your skin. One of the very first body moisturizers I ever loved. This is the Neutrogena Hydro Boost Fragrance Free Moisturizer. I love this. In the summer months, this is my kind of like midsection, so like chest, back, trunk area moisturizer because I don't like a heavy feeling moisturizer on those, especially at night when I go to put my pajamas on. I don't want anything that is gonna feel heavy or occlusive or make my pajamas stick. So I like this for those areas. And in the morning, in the winter, when it's cooler, more dry outside, I like this on my arms or any exposed areas that I'm going to use sunscreen on my body for because it's a really nice lightweight moisturizer that when worn under a sunscreen it doesn't feel heavy. So really, really enjoy this. I get fragrance free just because that's my preference but there is one with a scent that it's not a very heavy scent. It's like a lightweight floral scent so if you want to try a scent, it's a nice one. I like to use a manual exfoliant on my body once a week before I do any type of IPL treatments. This is the one from Dermalogica. I believe this was like $25 or $30 when I bought this from my aesthetic school. And before this, I've just been using the same type that I'm using now, which is one I pick up at Omomo, which is a local Japanese dollar store. So those, I think I get like three of them for $5. And I prefer those much more than this one, which was triple the cost. So 
pass on this. Over the summer months, I do go through a lot of sunscreen because for me, I personally use one sunscreen on my face, one on my neck, and then another one for my body. And, or if I'm wearing like short sleeve shirt and shorts, then I will have to reapply my sunscreen normally two to three times a day. So I go through a lot of sunscreen. So the first one I'm gonna talk about is an all mineral sunscreen. This is the Copper Tone Pure and Simple SPF 50. For my body where my skin is lighter, this is, it's, a, it's an all right one. It's an all mineral. It can feel a little heavy on the body. Um, I will, I feel like if you are any darker than I am though, this is gonna leave a very noticeable cast. And for me, especially on my face, which has a little bit more of redness just because of my rosacea. And I find for me, if I try to reapply this throughout the day on my face, I get very kind of casty and I can start turning kind of purple with this. So it's a nice affordable one if you have very, very sensitive skin and you do prefer to wear like fuller coverage makeup or you like more of a kind of brightening, tone up effect on your skin you might enjoy this but for me there's better mineral sunscreens out there also by copper tone we have the copper tone defending care face oil free spf 50 this is an all chemical sunscreen it does leave a nice mattifying effect i use this on my neck because on my eyes even though i did like the mattifying effect for the warmer months it does stink the eyes so no another one i don't enjoy this is another one that's not completely empty i just really i gave it an honest effort to go through it but this is the garnier ombre complete sun spf 45 for sensitive skin this is a thick pasty all chemical sunscreen stings on the face doesn't feel comfortable like on the arms or legs anywhere that creases and bends it kind of sticks and you can feel it kind of sticking. It's just, it's not pleasant, don't recommend, stay far away. The Aveeno Protect and Hydrate Moisturizing Sunscreen with an SPF 50. I love the way this looks on my face. It has the most beautiful, lightweight gel texture. It leaves a beautiful, radiant, luminous finish. However, it does have a quite a strong fragrance and something about this all chemical formula it not only stings me around the eyes, but as soon as it goes onto my cheeks, around my nose, my face lights up bright red like a Christmas tree and it stings. So I ended up using this on my arms a lot because it left such a beautiful glow and I enjoyed it on my body as it absorbs quite quickly. For me though, using this on my body, I think this bottle with reapplying it two to three times every day, I think this lasts me for about two weeks. So not a great value for body sunscreen usage. Dermatology Broad Spectrum Anti-Aging Sunscreen. This is a combination sunscreen. For me, this is one of my favorite sunscreens to use on my neck and my ears. It applies white within a matter of seconds once you start rubbing it in. It goes completely clear. It never feels sticky. It never feels heavy. The packaging on the sunscreen has changed. So it is now a white bottle with rose gold accents. Really, really nice. And I believe it's around either $25 or $35. So for a good, elegant sunscreen, it's a decent price. This was a beautiful sunscreen. This is the Make Prim UV Defense Me Fluid Sunscreen. It's an all mineral sunscreen. It does have the inclusion of, I believe, eucalyptus, so it does have a little bit of an essential oil. I don't personally notice the smell. It doesn't really irritate my eyes unless I get it right up to my eyes. For me, this really excelled though as a body sunscreen. Absolutely love this. Little bit goes a long ways, and this lasted me for about six months, so I really, really enjoy this. Love it, can't recommend it. If you can find it, go for it. Banana Boat Dry Balance SPF 50 Plus and the Banana Boat Sport Performance SPF 60. These are both great. I believe this was discontinued, so we're not gonna stay here long, but this was a nice one. It felt hydrating, but it absorbed quite quickly. This one has a slightly heavier, more kind of greasy feeling, but it does eventually dry down. I really, really enjoy these for the body. They were my go-to for a long time, but they have both been replaced by the new, I think, Simple Sport formula. It's more of a lightweight gel, dries down, no noticeable finish. So first up in makeup, we have some beauty sponges. Now, some people hang on to their beauty sponges for quite a while. For me, 
they get three months. I clean them after every use, but on that last use of the third, of that third and final month, they go directly into my empties bin because most of them say replace them after three months. So we have the large sponge from the Elf Beauty Sponge Trio. We have the Real Techniques Miracle Complexion Sponge. And then we have the Eco Tools Face Blending Sponge. This one was not my favorite. It has a stiffer formula even when it's wet. It just wasn't my favorite sponge. The Real Techniques, some days I really love this. Years ago, this was my all time favorite sponge, but I feel like I've tried other sponges since trying this years ago to where I don't love this as much as I used to. And my favorite of those three was this one by Eco Tools. It's really nice, but however, I find right before it hits that three month mark, so around one to two month, it does to kind of start falling apart a little bit and it kind of tears. So, so while this one doesn't have the longest life compared to the other two, it does an excellent job at blending out product. Farsali 24 Gold Infused Rose Gold Skin Mist. Really nice, beautiful, hydrating skin mist. This was the makeup setting spray I used on my wedding day. Absolutely love this. I've been through a few of these over the years. I think this is being discontinued because I saw it in the um, sales section of Sephora. If you want to try it, it's really nice. Since trying this though, I have found some new skincare. I have found some new setting sprays that I enjoy a lot more than this. So that are not empty, but they have just gone off. I've hung on to them for too long. So first one we have is the Nude Sticks Nudie in Illuminati. It's a clear highlighting balm. Never my favorite, left a little bit of a greasy feel and it just kind of started to smell off. Bare Minerals Bare Pro Concealer. This one also had it for way too long. A beautiful formula. It is my favorite stick concealer I have found. It's just the shade was slightly too dark for me so I could only use it when I was self tanning. And I would reconsider getting this in a lighter shade that matched me better for the rest of the year. So really enjoyed that. Up next, we have the Wet n Wild Mega Glow Hello Halo Liquid Highlighter in the shade Halo Goodbye. I remember I picked this up right after I moved to Canada. So that was 2017 and I've used this a ton. It looks like I haven't used it though, but I can still scrape a little bit out. It just had started to smell a little off, so we had a great run. I would reconsider getting another one of these. It is a great affordable drugstore liquid highlighter, and I recently mentioned that it is very similar to the color of the Chanel Rosy Light Drops, just a little bit warmer and much more affordable. This moved with me to Canada, so so this dates back pre-2017, and this is the MAC Lip Glass in the shade See Through. I've used up quite a bit of it. The smell, it no longer had the signature MAC Vanilla smell, and also, can you see, it's like this color is lighter than my skin tone. I had this phase back in, like before I moved to Canada when I was at Sephora, when I was at MAC, I really loved a pale nude lip. And now I just feel like it just doesn't suit me. It makes me look quite sickly and I don't wear the same level of intensity on my eyes to balance out a color like this. So had a great run, had lots of great memories of going out and clubbing when I was younger, but just not a color I wear and it's gone off. Another product that I loved, but this one was sadly discontinued. This is the Benefit 3D Brow Tones, and I had the shade number four. This was a really nice underrated product that I really enjoyed. It does have a little bit of a light reflex, so think about it like adding highlights to your eyebrows. I really, really enjoyed this, but I do think Benefit discontinued this. I love this. I preferred this more than the Benefit Gimme Brow, but I don't know. I felt like this is a product that just people didn't understand and now it's been discontinued. So we had a great run. I will miss you. Essence Volume Stylist. This was a great drugstore mascara. It does have this fiber. So if you're not someone who likes a fiber mascara, you might not enjoy this. For me, I do struggle with seasonal allergies and on the days when my allergies were acting up, I found that this would end up under my eyes. So loved how it looked. I didn't like how it wore throughout the day though. So if you're someone who doesn't struggle with watery eyes and you like more 
long, defined, lengthened lashes, you might really enjoy this. And I believe it's around $5, so lovely mascara. Opposite end of the spectrum, I have the Chanel Intomitable Intense Mascara in number 20, Brune or Brown, depending on how you like to pronounce brown. <laughs> this is a really wonderful formula and despite being called an intense formula, I find this is a really beautiful, quite natural looking mascara despite being called an intense formula. For me, it gives me a my lashes but better kind of look. It gives subtle kind of volume, more so for length and definition. Love this. I have a backup waiting to go. YSL Fusion Ink Cushion Compact, and this is in number 20. I absolutely loved this formula. This was a formula that I have gone through multiple ones and I just really enjoyed it. Now, something I did find interesting about this is this is just the compact. It is refillable. However, at least here in Canada, I could not find the refills for this foundation. I've repurchased this once before. The first shade I picked up was 30, too dark. 20 is like my perfect shade match. And I wish I could find just refills because Buying them both together makes this my most expensive cushion foundation, but it's beautiful. The final product we are going to talk about today is also a foundation that I have finished off. This is the Chanel Le Beige's Gel Foundation, and this shade in particular is in number 22 Rose. This shade is a little bit dark for me. It is one of my favorite colors when I fake tan during the summer. It is an absolutely stunning formula. I don't hear many people talk about the Le Beige Cushion. Right now, I currently have one refill left in 12 rows, and that is such a beautiful shade for me. For me, Chanel Beige Rose number 12 and most of their formulas is one of the best shade matches. It's a good shade that blends in with the rest of my body, and it just leaves my skin looking so bright and awake and fresh. And that is something I really like because I like when I have a very kind of uniform color from head, neck to body. So I love this formula. It's lightweight. It is like a no makeup makeup foundation. Towards the end of this one, this was not the foundation from Chanel to reach for the most. The one I reach for the most now is the Chanel Le Beige Water Fresh Tint. That one in shade light. Another one I absolutely love. I love the ease of application. So we'll see if I repurchase this again in the future. That is going to conclude all of the empties I used up for summer 2021. I know that there was a ton of products. This is going to be a longer video, but so, but thank you so much for spending this time and hanging out with me. I personally love empties videos because empties videos, it gives you time to really kind of use up a product, see, would you repurchase it? Would you not repurchase it? And for me, I prefer doing empties versus monthly favorites because half the time in a month, I will like one or two of the products I tried and the rest of them will get pushed towards the back burner because it's, I've been in cosmetics for a long time. I've worked as a makeup artist and an esthetician and I know what I like and what I don't like. So it's quite hard to impress me. So if I use a product all the way up, it had to have something that at least intrigued me enough to use it so I didn't just pass along to a friend. So thank you so much for hanging out with me today. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you on the next video. Bye y'all.